couldn't exist. So at full compensation, PCO2 will, oops, PCO2 will increase by 0.7 times 10, 7 millimeters of mercury to 47 millimeters of mercury. So you know what we're going to do there also? We're going to put an axis for PCO2. We used to be at 40 when it was uncompensated, uh -huh. the normal PCO2. We should go at 47 for the full compensation. Anything in between is a partial compensation. Anything beyond is going to be a mixed disorder. How is it mixed? If you're below 40, it's mixed with respiratory alkalosis, so it's a mixed alkalosis. If you're above 47, it's mixed with a respiratory acidosis. You okay with this one? Is it making sense? How to look at numbers? So, two big formulas right now. For metabolic acidosis, PCO2 becomes one and a half times bicarb plus eight. For metabolic alkalosis, PCO2 increases by 0.7 for each one milli equivalent per liter increase in bicarb. And then compare the values that were measured in your patient with that theoretical value of full compensation. Are you there? Are you on the way there? Or are you at either extreme, uh, too low or too high, compared to that range of acceptable values for compensation? And then like this, you can answer carefully. Huh? Now, your second point would be metabolic compensation of respiratory disorders. And when you do metabolic compensation of respiratory disorders. Now, remember this one takes days to occur. So clinically, it is really the one where you're more likely to be able to see partially and then eventually fully compensated as you measure the patient. Huh? So there's no really overcompensation there. If you see overcompensation, since it doesn't exist, it means there's a mixed disorder. Is that okay? So if you're above 47, it means that's not compensation. There's also a respiratory acidosis with a metabolic alkalosis. Is that Because you don't overcompensate. That works? Ah, so I didn't give you the changes in pH value because you don't need to know exactly the value of pH that would give. Now, if you wanted to, Zaire, you plug those values in this equation. And as you do, you'll get your pH value. It's pK plus the log of the bicarb divided by A times PCO2. And that'll give you the pH. <laughs> Is that okay? But you don't have to because you've measured the pH and that allows you to say, is it acidosis or is it alkalosis? And then of course you come up with your primary disturbance and now you argue the other parameter. Does it look like it's in the process of compensating or not? If it is not compensating, is it disturbed to make a mixed disorder with either acidosis or alkalosis from that other parameter? So, all the little equation allows you to do is come up with a theoretical value at compensation against which you compare what you measured in your patient. So hey, let's try this one. Metabolic compensation of respiratory disorder. Hey, be careful with this one. In four to five days for metabolic acidosis, so low pH due to low bicarb, Expect PCO2 
to drop and it should uh, uh, metabolic acidosis so it except pco2 to do what It's because I got myself confused there. Respiratory acidosis. So high PCO2. Expect, I'm redoing the same one. Expect bicarb to do what? There you go. Except bicarb to increase. And look by how much it'll increase. Increase by 0.4 times the increased PCO2. Look, after four or five days of respiratory alkalosis, where you had a high pH and a low PCO2, then expect by carb to fall, and it will fall by 0.4 times the decrease in PCO2. So for the metabolic compensation, it takes days, but it's a factor of 0.4. However much you've increased or decreased the PCO2, time it by 0.4, that tells you by how much you're going to have to increase or decrease the bicarb. So let's take an example. Example, let's say PCO2 is 80, pH is less than 7.4, I have a respiratory acidosis right now be very careful first thing Mohammed you still here with me first thing I need to remember is there already a change in bicarb because PCO2 